Hi, welcome back friends. It's me, Dr. Arj. I'm a knee and hip orthopedic consultant based at the Lanzerhof Clinic in Mayfair in London, England. As an orthopedic surgeon, I handle muscle, bone, tendon, ligaments each week. And today I'm gonna to teach you three real reasons why your knees might click or crunch and when it's totally normal and you don't need to be worried and when it might need further attention. So each month I work with hundreds of patients and each week, I'm often having to perform surgeries, either open surgeries where I'm directly handling tissues in your knee or keyhole surgeries where I'm looking at them and trying to repair them or fix them through small incisions and a camera. As an orthopedic surgeon, I'm also a medical doctor, so I combine my surgical expertise with expertise in looking at scans, working on your nutrition, optimizing your exercise and your strength, and also helping with your metabolism. All of this, all of these pillars are really important to help you with your joint pain. And in this video, we're looking in particular at my subspeciality, which is knee pain. So knee clicking and crunching is incredibly common. My own knees click and crunch and have done for years. I'm 48 now, but they've been painlessly crunching and clicking from my early 20s, and I've not been worried at all and I do all activities. Some of the sounds are harmless, some improve dramatically with the right strengthening exercises that you can do in the gym, but a small amount of these noises might mean you need to see a medical professional for further evaluation and investigations and advice. In particular, if you're getting pain when you get the noise or the feeling of crunching or cracking. So we're gonna talk about the three real reasons that your knees might click or crunch. Reason number one, harmless gas bubbles. So when you stand up after sitting, or you might stretch out your knees straight from being bent for a long period, you may hear or feel a pop at the front of the knee, and then relief often comes afterwards. These are just tiny gas bubbles in the joint fluid, popping and bursting, a bit like when you crack your knuckles. It's mainly composed of nitrogen. This is the largest component in the bubble. Other gases present in smaller amounts would be carbon dioxide, oxygen, and sometimes argon, which is a naturally occurring inert gas. These gases normally dissolve in your synovial fluid, and synovial fluid is what lubricates your joints. Why do these bubbles form? The pressure inside your joint sometimes drops. When that happens in any situation, gas within the liquid will come out of solution and form a bubble. The bubble collapses. This is called cavitation. You get that pop sound. This is physics very similar to your knuckles and it's more common because your knees are much bigger. So these gas bubbles do not harm your cartilage and they do not require treatment. Reason number two, soft tissue snapping. So many clicks come from softer structures around your knee like ligaments or tendons or bands of fibrous tissue or fascia. The first one we'll talk about is the band or the iliotibial band. This is a band of tissue on the outside of a knee. So here's a knee model. The band of tissue is on the outer surface. So it's on the outside part of your thigh. It's very firm tissue. And as your knee bends and straightens, the band of tissue can sometimes flip back and forth, which is totally normal. Sometimes can cause a little bit of friction and discomfort occasionally that's number one of the causes. Number two is the popliteus tendon. Again, it's not on this knee model. This is the front of the knee, the side of the knee and the back. It essentially is a muscle that goes like this at the back of the knee. So it starts on the back on the inner side, goes up and has a tendon here. And a tendon is it's like a rubber band, an elastic band that helps attach muscle, which is meaty tissue to the bone. You often can get discomfort on the outer back corner of your knee, and this can be worse when you twist your knee or you rise up from a squat. The third bit of tissue that can cause noise is a plica. Again, not on this model, unfortunately. It's often on the inner part of the front of the knee to the inside part. So it's normally like my finger, it's normally here between the lower part of this femur bone normally attaches near the patella bone, which is the kneecap bone. 
And again, as the knee bends and straightens, the tissue flicks back and forth. Plica tissue is totally harmless tissue. Some of us have them, some of us don't. They're made from folds of the inner lining or the inner skin of the knee called the synovial lining. And sometimes you get sort of bands that form. Sometimes they form after trauma or surgeries. The rubbing over the bone can cause noises or irritation. And often again, they can be trained away very rarely sometimes we perform very minor surgery just to remove them. It's very quick to do, but often unnecessary. Hoffer's fat pad is again here, would be here, missing on the model. It's a big ball of fat that we have at the front of our knee. It's a normal part of tissue that you have at the front of the knee here between the bones. Whether you're overweight, normal weight or underweight, it's an important cushion and it's full of nerve endings. So it's quite sensitive when it's squashed. Sometimes when it's squashed that can cause noises or a juddery feeling in the knee. Sometimes when it's squashed a lot, instead of being squidgy, fatty tissue, it, become, it can become quite hard and fibrous. And again, that can cause pain at the front of your knee or a sensation of cracking or popping. Your hamstring tendons at the back of your knee, they're at the back here. They're attached to the back of the thigh or the back of the knee. They help your knee bend. Those tendons, they're stringy bits of tissue you can feel behind your knee either on the inner surface or the outer surface, they can sometimes cause snapping when you bend your knee or try and sit down, or if you're in the gym and you may do a hamstring curl. What causes some of these structures to make noise or cause discomfort is normally a type of muscle weakness or imbalance in the strength. So it doesn't always mean that your legs are weak, it may just mean that some of the muscles are overpowering the other muscles because you don't either train them enough or you don't do activity enough that helps those muscles develop. It could mean that overall you're not as strong as you could be or you're not as strong as you used to be when you were much younger because you don't have time to exercise anymore. And often we lose strength with age and we lose muscle quality of tissue and our tendons shrink as well and get a bit stiffer unless we keep stretching them out each day or unless we get to the gym even once a week for one hour to do exercises with all these muscles. Reason number three, having a noisy kneecap or what we call patellofemoral crepitus. So on this model, we do have the patella, that's this oval bone at the front of the knee called the kneecap, and then it articulates or rubs. So articulates means when two bones fit into each other and mat. So the bones normally articulate or move on each other the patella has a kind of V-shaped groove on it and the femur also has a V-shaped trough in it. So the bones normally match in each other. And as the knee bends, the patella kind of moves up and down, normally centrally and smoothly like a train moving up and down on train tracks. Some people feel a gravelly type of crunch or click when they bend their knees, when they go upstairs or come downstairs or or go into a squat or a lunge and pain-free crunching is normally harmless. It's just again because there's a lot of pressure between the bones, maybe because the muscles in your thigh are a little bit weak or maybe that you're carrying a little bit too much weight. Sometimes the hip muscles are not very strong. And actually though the hip is further away from the knee, those hip muscles control how your kneecap tracks in the femur or in the thigh bone and if they're a bit weak, it won't be central. And again, that can cause aggravation and noise. Sometimes the cartilage, which is an important surface on the end of the bone. So you've got bone and you've got cartilage, which is a smooth lining on the end of the bone. It's about two to three millimeters thick on most bones. It's sometimes a bit ruffled. So it's a bit like when you have a brand new road that's been laid out, it's nice and flat. But if you see a slightly older road you can get minor damage like minor potholes or cracks and that road's a bit more bumpy so again as you travel or as the patella travels on the femur if the cartilage on either bone is a bit ruffled or cracked or has a little bit of loose bits on it then then you'll get bumps and clicks sometimes you have inflammation in the tissues the soft tissues around the bones and again if they're thickened because inflammation normally means swelling or thickening that again can cause noise or cracking as your knee bends. Surfaces that normally would glide, especially when they're thin layers of tissue, if they're thicker, they can normally bump or catch on each other. So what are the four things that can help you with these symptoms? Number one would be strength training. Number two would be nutrition. Number three would be getting lots of sleep. And number four would be managing or lowering your stress levels if you can. Why are these helpful? or strength training, and I believe you really need to strength train in the gym, strength training at home, 
or with bands or with body weight is useful, but I don't think it's too effective when you're trying to bulk up and get your legs strong to help with knee symptoms. So strength training is important because if you have strong thigh muscles at the front and back and gluteal muscles, which are on the side of your hips and the back of your hips, they really control how the knee bones see each other and how much force goes through them and how they track on each other. Normally to get strong, in my opinion, you need to be in the gym at least once a week for one hour. You need to get on those machines and work on every single muscle, pushing your legs away against resistance. The resistance of the weight needs to be heavy enough. So doing six to 10 of the exercise is, is challenging. If you're able to do more than 10 of the exercise, the weight is too light. And if you can't even do six, the weight is too heavy. And you can adjust as you go along. Each exercise should be done three times and you should have one to two minutes rest between each round of six or eight or 10. And one of the good things you can do if you feel confident is to video yourself and look at your form while you're doing your exercise and in the one or two minutes when you're having a break, study the video and see if you can make adjustments because we don't always know if our form is good. It's really important you do these exercises properly. We'll talk about all of this in my other videos. Good nutrition is really important and again we'll touch on this in my other videos in particular because good nutrition helps lower inflammation and swelling in your body. So some of the things you want to be eating are like dark green vegetables like kale and spinach, certain berries like blackberries and blueberries, olive oil is great, pulses, legumes and certain spices like cumin and nigella seeds and turmeric. Sleep is really important for many reasons but as we sleep we heal and our cortisol levels reduce. As we sleep we heal and our inflammatory response is dampened. Stress levels are important for many reasons again but when we're not stressed we're less likely to get inflamed and we're less likely to trigger the pain response and again we're going to talk about sleep and how to try and get a better sleep, which is really difficult for a lot of us. I often find it really difficult certain days, especially in my job, which can be fairly high pressure and stress in particular. And again, this is something I feel certainly when I've got really big surgeries or I've got to look after lots of unwell patients. So managing stress is important. All of these things are things that are important to me and I'll help you manage them in the same way that I do. And we'll talk about all this in my other videos. So in terms of your joints or the orthopedic care of your joints to improve your longevity, or what I call your ortho longevity, which is the holistic or whole body care of your joints to make sure that they last as long as possible to keep you active, independent, happy, doing all the things you want to do. It's really important now, as you may know, that we're, we're all sort of living longer, so that's our lifespan. But what's important is that we have a longer health span, which is the number of years we're healthy for. It doesn't make a lot of sense to live a really long time if we're not going to be well or independent or we're going to be sick. We want to live for as long as possible, but we want to be independent, mobile, and actually able to help other people. So we don't need help, we want to help other people. So in summary, the main things that we're going to cover in my next videos are anti-inflammatory nutrition, a daily movement routine, in particular, how to manage weight, how to reduce stress, and the most important medicine of all, which is strength training. So whether you're not active, strength training is important. Whether you're super active and you do lots of running and you do lots of sports, strength training is important. You've got to do your strength training. There's no way out of it and it needs to be forever. It's not till your pain gets better, it's forever. And all my ask as a, an experienced orthopedic knee surgeon who's seen inside knees and looks inside knees every week is that you need to commit to this at least one hour once a week forever. And if I can do it with a really busy private practice, NHS practice, four children, I've had my fourth child recently and I'm almost 49 and my third child was when I was 46. You know, longevity and also longevity is really important to me and I'm living it. So I'm going to help you do the same. In terms of when is the cracking a potential worry, so red flags would be if the pain is really sharp, if you've got lots of swelling associated with the pain, or even if the swelling comes later, often the next day, if the knee gives way so it feels unstable, if it locks. Locking means slightly different things to doctors versus patients, but for us in, in the medical field, locking is when you cannot straighten out the knee fully. 
So the knee's quite bent and you can't fully straighten it, that is locked. Often if it can't bend fully, that's what we call pseudo locking. It's not quite as serious, but I'd still treat it as a red flag. So if you don't have full movement, that's important. If you get catching or reduced movement, or you've had some sort of injury, all of these scenarios, then I would seek medical advice. Normally, I would recommend an orthopedic surgeon who specializes in knees. Doesn't mean they're gonna operate on you. We're doctors who can operate. Most of us only operate on 10 or 20% of our patients. I do in particular have a very low surgical rate and I only operate when you really need it and if other things haven't worked. But other suitably trained professionals would be an experienced sports physiotherapist, a GP with a specialist interest in sports medicine, a sports medicine and exercise consultant, and an advanced nurse practitioner who deals with injuries or works in an urgent care centre or emergency centre. If you need advice, we'll talk about treatment options probably in my other videos, but they may be the strength training that we've talked about, but if you're really struggling because the knee is hurting a lot, ultrasound guided injection therapies are really, are really effective and very low risk, minimally invasive. They may include high dose PRP treatment. PRP is where blood is drawn from you and then it's spun in the centrifuge. So the growth factors and the healing proteins in your blood are concentrated. We normally need at least 10 billion platelets per sample. That's what the research shows for this to be effective. And then we inject this into the area and it can help promote healing of structures. The other treatment which can sometimes lubricate and help the joint function better is hyaluronic acid. The research evidence for this is a little bit less favorable, but in my experience, having treated thousands of patients for decades, it's really effective, especially if there's catching or pain and has minimal downside. It's a type of gel that you normally have in your synovial fluid, especially when you're younger, and the percentage of that hyaluronic acid diminishes with time and age, so this is kind of a top-up shot. The other thing that's been injected for many years is steroid or corticosteroid. Some doctors call this cortisone. All of these mean the same thing. This is a naturally occurring substance in your body that helps reduce inflammation. It's synthetically made and injected into the joint and is a powerful anti-inflammatory. In small doses and given very infrequently, it's very safe and it's very effective and can really help reduce pain and swelling. It's a bit like having a Nurofen or an ibuprofen shot going straight into the area that is hurting you. If you're still struggling or the injuries are a lot worse and you've seen your orthopedic knee surgeon, then some patients need surgery. We normally tend to start off with arthroscopy, which is a word that means looking inside a joint and that's also called keyhole surgery. We tend to make two little one centimeter cuts over the knee whilst you're normally under anesthetic. And with one of the cuts, we put a little camera into the knee attached to a big monitor. We can move the camera around and see all inside your knee in high definition and see all the structures as we move your knee around, which is very useful. And through the other small portal, we have various tools which are getting better and better as the years go on to help repair, remove, and help structures in your knee mend. The procedures are normally quite short. They take between about 10 minutes up to sometimes an hour, depending on what we're doing in there. And most often the procedures are day surgery, so you get to wake up and go home the same day. And for most of the procedures, you can walk on your knees, certainly when I do them, putting most of your weight through them with crutches for comfort. And you're normally back in the gym trying to rehabilitate after about two to three weeks, depending on what we've done in there with your physiotherapy team that we link in with. So again, it's quite a lot we've gone through. It's a broad overview of your knees, why they might crack, what the causes and treatments are, but we're gonna go through a lot of these other topics in my other videos. So do like and subscribe if you find this really useful. I'm really keen to make more videos and help as many patients as I can, especially those that can't directly access me in London if you're watching from other countries or it's really difficult for you to access the right person. Thanks so much. See you soon.